Hey, what's up everyone? Jason Turley here, back with a, another video. And today we're looking at, once again, uh, this PNG steganography challenge from Try Hack Me, uh, because someone recently commented, hey, could you post a video on how to do this using the Pico CTF web show? A lot of people do, do this on their school computers and don't have access to Linux. So I did solve this challenge about 10 months ago, and I did it using my Kali Linux virtual machine, but as this user stated, a lot of people don't have access to that. They don't have access to their virtual machine environments that have all the tools they might need. They're restricted to the Pico CTF web shell, and if you've never used it before or you're not sure how to get to it, um, if you go to Pico CTF, log in, you see it here. Let's see, let me refresh this, resize this. We see here in this corner, we have the actual Pico CTF web show where you can click there and enter your username and password. And you can click this icon here to expand and make it full screen. So you enter your username and slam in your password. And there you go. You're greeted with this message that says, welcome to the Pico. Oh, you can't see any of that. Let me. drag this over here. So we're greeted with this message after you enter your credentials. Welcome to the Pico CTF web show. The web show is intended for only solving Pico CTF challenges. So don't use it for any other purposes besides that. So I've used this before. If I do an LS, we can see I do have some directories here. I really don't showcase it too much on the YouTube channel. But I will do that here. So let me go back and pull up that find me or that uh, challenge. Okay, so here we do have that hide me challenge from before. I'll quickly walk through it because I've already solved it in a previous video. And this is just strictly seeing how to do it within the web shell. So the description, every file gets a flag. The SOC analyst saw one image uh, being sent back and forth between two people. They decided to investigate and found out that there was more than what meets the eye. And then we can click here and we can download uh, a picture. So I just slam this on my desktop and save it as flag, save it. And if I open it, we just see it's Pico CTF, the icon. Okay, but how can I do this using the web shell? So let's do right click, copy clean link, go to our web shell. These sessions never last. So if we're in the Pico CTF web show, we can make a directory called hide me. That's optional. It's just something I like to do. We see that it's empty. So let's grab and download this file. Hide me, right click, copy link address, and let's slam this into the web show. And we see that saved as flag.png. If we run a file on it, we do see it is PNG image data. And if we want to open it, we can't yet. I will showcase how to do that in a second. And if you want to open the file, um, it's not easy because you're just in a terminal session. You're not in any type of GUI desktop environment. So we're analyzing this file. We're poking around. We're playing. Uh, we can't open it like we did before with the downloader in the file explorer. But if I run the strings command on it and maybe even pipe that into less, we do see some bits and we do see some data. And if I hit capital G on my keyboard to take me all the way down to the bottom of the page, we do see this. We do see a slash secret and a secret flag.png. So let's quit out of here. And if we really want, we can do strings, flag, and then pipe and grep on secret. And we see all the results here. So what's going on? We think there might be extra data in here. So if we do an XXD on flag.png, you can see it here as well. You can see secret and the flag.png, and you should be able to start seeing different uh, magic bits and different header files. But let's not get too sidetracked. So if you think perhaps there's more than what meets the eye in this file, you think it's more than just a PNG image, you can see if there's anything to extract with the bin walk command. And just running bin walk and hitting enter here, it will do a lot of the work for you. But if you want, as always, you can peek at the man page, the manual and see what's going on. 
So up here, the description. So binwalk is a tool for searching binary files for embedded files and executable code. So if you think there's a hint or an indicator that there might be something embedded within your file, whether that's a PNG or something else, you can run binwalk on it. And there is different options for extraction. We see attack E to automatically try to extract things. And we see attack capital D to extract on specific file type signatures. But I'm a Q out of this. Uh, let me run that again. So looking at our output from the bin walk, we see three columns. We see the offset written in decimal, again in hexadecimal. And then we see a description of what was actually pulled, what was actually extracted from that file. So at the beginning, offset zero, we see it's the regular PNG image that we opened up before, which is the Pico CTF logo. At offset 41, we see some Zlib compressed data. So we know something was zipped inside of this file. Something was compressed and packed and stuffed inside of here. And it even tells us what it was. Um, secret in the slash at the end notates that it was a directory. And we have something called secret slash flag dot PNG. So if I do an LS again, we don't see anything. LS like LA. Maybe I do need to run binwalk with that tech E to actually extract everything that it told us was in here. So now when I do an LS like LA, we do see that directory was actually created. So a bin walk by itself will just show what's in there. And then with the tech E, it'll actually go in and extract the information. So let's navigate into this directory. If we do another LS tech LA. We do see some stuff here. If we run a file star to look at every single thing that's in here. There we go. We see some things are empty. We see some raw Zlib compressed data as well as a zip file. But what we care about today is this secret directory. So if I navigate into that directory and do another ls tech la, we see that there's only one file, a flag.png, but it is different than the flag.png from before. And we can demonstrate that with the uh, diff command. So hopefully this shows up on the screen. That's the command I ran. A diff to look at the two images side by side and see where they differ. And we get this output right here, stating that the binary files flag that PNG and the other one from before, they are different. So what can we do about that? If we know this is a PNG file, how can we actually open it? Can we run the strings command from before and find the flag in there? We can poke and we can look. We do see some stuff here at the bottom. We do see the extracted date and a little bit of metadata, but no, we don't actually get the flag from this. So how can we actually open the file? When we were out here before and we clicked on this, this like download button, here, as soon as we click, it opens up our uh, file explorer. But how can we do the same inside of the web shell? So if I was in my regular Kali Linux shell, I would do EOG. I of GNOME, you guys can't see that. But if I don't have I of GNOME installed, what else can we do? We can try the display command. So if we do man display. So display, display is an image or an image sequence on an X server. That sounds perfect. That sounds exactly what we want. So if we run display and then our flag, it tries and it will fail because there is no X server running. There is no GUI graphical environment um, installed on this web shell. Okay, so that's interesting. Um, what about this command called xdg open? So it opens a file or URL in the user's preferred application. So XEG, it opens a file or URL in the user's preferred application. That sounds good to me. It does support the file protocol as well as FTP in the two HTTP protocols. So let's give that a go. XDG open, and then the name of our flag. And down here at the bottom, sorry for all the 
resizing and moving around of these panes in these windows. But so down here, it's a little hard to see, but it says image slash PNG, and you can either enter a D to download it or a C to cancel. Let's do D to download. And it does enter us in this new terminal uh, pane, the session. We can use the arrow keys to move and navigate. And we see here at the top, it specifies our file location. So this was a little bit confusing when I first used this to poke around and play. But what I ended up doing or trying was hitting P to print and then going down to mail the file. So if we try to mail it, we could mail it to ourselves. And we can see down here, it does pop up um, a little session, a little menu for us to enter some type of email address. So if you don't want to use your actual email address, you can try using something like 10 minute mail. And this gives you a temporary email address every 10 minutes that you can use. Let me refresh the page. There we go. So we can grab this and copy this in. Alternatively, we could have used temp mail. This is a very similar service for just temporary email. So we can slam that in and we see that gets populated down there and we smash the enter key and it looks like it works. But if I go back to that 10 minute mail session, our inbox is empty. You can see it's currently zero and it does not ever get filled up. So I don't know if there's some type of firewall or some type of restriction in place with the Pico CTF where they don't allow outbound traffic or outbound mail. So I was kind of stumped and I was poking around and I was playing I'm like, what else uh, can we do here? Hit control C to exit out of that. So we can't use I have GNOME. We can't use XCG open. We can't use display because there's no X11 server. There's gotta be some type of way. I played around with like um, the Python ACTP servers and just maybe serve up some type of uh, a simple server that I can access from my uh, Windows station and that doesn't work either. I can't access um, this closed off network because if I look at the IP information, you know, it's a subnet that I'm not a part of. So I was banging my head against the wall. I was scratching my head. I'm like, there's gotta be some type of way to solve this and open this PNG. I did what I should have done from the beginning, which is read documentation and read the readme that is specified. So if we look at the readme that's provided in the home folder of the web shell, we get this big wall of text and we can continue to scroll down. And if you look at this statement here, exporting files from the web shell to the browser or vice versa is possible using the SZ or RZ commands. So there we have it. So if I come back here to my directory, I do an LS, just confirm it's still there. I can do an SZ on flag.png and we see it opens up here and it's asking me to uh, download and save it. So scroll that over, hopefully you guys can see that. So I click save and then I just open it up like a regular file and this is super tiny. And then there we go, we get the flag. So there you have it. So the web shell, it is a great alternative resource if you are in some type of environment where you don't have access to your own terminal, whether that's Windows or Linux. I know I like showcasing Kali Linux a lot on this channel, um, but there you go. A little bit of creativity, a little bit of reading the documentation. Hopefully you guys learned something new. I knew I kind of beat around the bush a lot in this video. I could have just immediately um, showed the SZ command. But I thought, hey, maybe you guys can learn a bit about some other different commands like display or XDG open that will work in a regular terminal that does have a X11 server, which they will have usually running by default. So that's it. As always, take it easy and see you guys in the next video.